This is episode 16, take one. See, I take direction. Occasionally. Welcome back. We've been talking about the disease of addiction as it exists in nature, a primary midbrain disease that has really nothing to do with using drugs. You can have addiction and not be using drugs, and you can have addiction and be using drugs. But before our society understood the neurobiology that we've shown you in this series, we've confused the ideas of addiction with the idea of normal people problematically using substances that get them in trouble. We've had a very focused law enforcement sort of response to that in our society. We'll limit those substances, prohibit those substances, and we've developed a term for those substances. We've called them drugs. But in the context of addiction, the big question is, what's a drug? In our society, we use this term drug so frequently that people actually talk about drug addiction. Not addiction as a primary illness of the brain, but drug addiction. We try to limit drug addiction. We're trying to fix drug addiction. People go to treatment for drug addiction. Even more, people go to treatment for a specific drug addiction. Cocaine addiction or alcohol addiction. And using something else doesn't seem to figure into the treatment. So if someone goes to treatment for cocaine addiction and stops using cocaine but starts to overeat for because of the same midbrain biology, gains 100 pounds and dies of a heart attack, instead of saying, what didn't we do right? Our medical system says we did a great job on the cocaine, but gee, he had that obesity problem and that was somebody else's problem and somebody else's fault. Here's an incomplete list of things that do the same thing as heroin, cocaine, and alcohol. When you hear this list, don't think, well, it doesn't do it to me, so it can't be true. There isn't one brain. Every brain is different, and every brain reacts to different rewards. That's why some people with addiction use cocaine, and some people with addiction use heroin, and some people use chocolate eclairs. It depends on what raises your dopamine. Dangerous or risky behavior. Sleep deprivation. Making someone smile. Taking in food. Getting a hard job done. Being the center of attention. Sexual climax. All of these things have been found scientifically to raise dopamine tone. And if you look clinically, all of these things have syndromes of overuse around them. You've probably noticed I don't use the word drug a lot. I prefer the word reward because the midbrain doesn't really care where the reward came from. It doesn't care if you shoot it, drink it, smoke it, or act it. As long as your dopamine is spiking up high enough to create that attachment, there will be that strong attachment. As long as whatever it is can raise dopamine tone up to that point, that's going to be something that acts like a drug. So reward is really a better term. There aren't big sources of reward in someone's life with low dopamine tone. And so when something finally hits that reward signal, they get focused. And we've all noticed that about people that we know who have addiction. In fact, people who have attached to behaviors on this list. We have that word in our culture. He's a workaholic. She's a workaholic. We know it intuitively. What this list of other rewards ought to tell us is that when we treat addiction, we can't focus on drug addiction or a drug addiction. We have to focus treatment on the whole person and for the disease, the whole disease, the brain disease. Now speaking of treatment, sometimes that involves medicine. And oftentimes I'll get the question of, aren't we just substituting one drug for another? So it's important to ask the question, what's a medicine? 
We'll do that next time. I hope you join me. Until then, be well.